Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. The title of our series is Jesus, the Only Way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Uh, before we proceed further, let me remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, like and follow us on Facebook. Um, like and share our videos and messages, our picture messages, short videos and um, you know, it will be a great blessing to you. you know, share the blessing with others. Hallelujah. Share it with your friends, family, relatives, you know, fellow believers, servants of God. Check out our community section. We keep publishing uplifting, edifying messages. It will bless you. It will strengthen you to keep moving forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. We are publish publishing short videos and reels in Facebook. I and um, check them out. It will be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious, glorious help in our lives. Father, we thank you that you are sustaining us. You are taking care of us. You are mindful of us. You are thinking about us. You are pondering about us. Your thoughts are so great. Hallelujah to Jesus. Go with me to the book of um, Psalms, actually. Hallelujah to Jesus. Go with me to Psalm 40. Let's read it. You know, in prayer you should read the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what God likes most to hear in prayer? His word in your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Go with me to Psalm 40. Let's read verse 5 together. Many, O Lord my God, are works which thou hast done. And your thoughts which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Hallelujah. Let me read that for to you from uh, some of the more contemporary versions. Hallelujah to Jesus. Father, your word is so precious. Let's read from, um, hallelujah. The English Standard Version. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than they can be told. <laughs> you know, the amount of things that God has done for us and the amount of thoughts that he is thinking about us, it's, it's, it's just more than can be told. One translation says, they are too many to be numbered. Hallelujah. Too many to be numbered. Another, uh, let's read it from the New Living Translation. Oh Lord my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I try to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, it, it's a good idea in your prayer time to recite the wonderful deeds of God which he has done towards you. I know we are in the middle of a prayer. You know? It's okay. God likes it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much that you have blessed us. Father, we thank you for blessing the work of our hands. Father, we thank you so much you have given us life breath and all things. Father, we thank you that you sustained us from our mother's womb even till today and you will continue to sustain us. Father, you have helped us from the moment of our conception even till now and Father, we thank you, you will continue to help us. Father, without you we cannot do anything. Father, we are created by you but also sustained by you i think we should read um, uh, psalm psalm 46 i'm sorry isaiah 46 isaiah 46 go with me to isaiah 46 hallelujah to jesus isaiah 46 this is a beautiful passage of scripture this scripture was quickened me around the time of um, COVID right? and it has been very close to my heart from that time and um, Isaiah 46 verse 3 hearken unto me O house of Jacob and all the remnant of the house of Israel which are borne by me from the belly which are carried from the womb from the time of conception yeah. hallelujah Hallelujah to Jesus. 
and notice this he is saying verse 4 and even to your old age i am he even to your old age and just because you, you know you, you grew up you became a teenager or you become middle aged adult <laughs> or you became a little old with some gray hair or your gray hair you know yeah you know, all you have is gray hair <laughs> right no matter what your age is right god is with you right even to your old age i am he even to hoar hairs i will carry you i have made i will bear even i will carry and i will deliver you hallelujah let's pray this father we thank you so much that you have been supporting us helping us sustaining us from the moment of conception father you delivered us from our mother's womb you took us out hallelujah and father we thank you so much you have been carrying us and father we thank you even to our old age you are god almighty our creator our maker and father even to our hoar hairs you will carry us you are our father our heavenly father and father we thank you that you have made us and you will bear father you will carry us and you will deliver us father we praise you we praise you we praise you hallelujah to jesus and father we today lean on you and trust in you the most high and father it is in your hands to exalt to promote and father we thank you for promoting us father we thank you for your blessing upon us father we thank you for bringing us into a broad place father we thank you so much you are working great things in our life things that hasn't even touched our heart things that hasn't even touched our mind hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus glory be to god wonderful jesus wonderful wonderful jesus father we thank you for your great plans for us father we pray you work in us both to will and to fulfill your will and plan for our lives father we pray you strengthen us and equip us with every good thing to do your will and father we pray you work in us that which is well pleasing in your sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen father we pray you stretch out your hand to heal people and uh, signs and wonders be done by the name of our lord jesus father we ask you that you move mightily in the lives of the people who are listening whatever the need be let it be met whatever problems they are facing let it be solved let it be fixed father we pray that you empower them to move forward let them boldly move forward and father let them be ambassadors for our lord jesus christ let them not be ashamed of the gospel let them be bold as a lion bold as a lion you have given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and father help us to hold fast to our lord jesus and to proclaim our lord jesus in wisdom in the holy spirit father we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers father we praise you we praise you we praise you hallelujah to jesus father we pray your anointing break every yoke remove every burden break every chain father we thank you so much for your help father in the name of our lord jesus we pray amen hallelujah hallelujah to jesus it's good isn't it eh right? to come to god to have this privilege of worshiping uh, to have the privilege of praying hallelujah it's a good thing eh right? fellowship with god talk to him right god, god likes you god loves you god wants to hear your voice you know hallelujah hallelujah to jesus all right then let's go to jeremiah go with me to the book of jeremiah jeremiah chapter 6 let's read from verse 16 hallelujah to jesus thus saith the lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths say old path right not the latest trend but the old path right where is the good way 
and walk there. And you know, we are supposed to ask the question, where is the good way? You know, when, if there is a good way, it also implies that there is a bad way. Right? Every way is not a good way. That's why you have to stand and you have to examine and you have to check and you have to see, is this a good way? Is this an old path? Is this time tested? Has it stood the test of time? What's the fruit of this way? If the people, have they traveled in this path before? If they have traveled, what, what, what was the end? What was the result? What was the fruit? Right? You know, it's, it's said, uh, you should know your history. Right? Why? Because people who don't know the history are doomed to repeat the same mistakes. Why are they saying that? What do you learn in history? See, in history you learn the ways and the path that people have chosen. Right? The policies government chose. The path that people, individuals took. And uh, a nation, what did they do? What, what path did they take? What was the result of that path? What was the fruit of it? How did it end? What is the end of the matter? So you should, wisdom considers the end. Wisdom doesn't just, you know, think about the momentary um, pleasure or the momentary feel-good factor. Now, a lot of bad things, you know, will feel good. Not, I'm not just talking about the sin part of it. You know, so some ideologies, they make you feel good. But if you continue traveling in those ideas, it will, it, it will destroy you totally. Right? Today, many of the things that are being promoted in this world are based on this feel-good factor. Eh? Isn't this good? Isn't it? Wouldn't this be wonderful? That's what you know. It's, it's called utopia, right? Hallelujah. You understand this? It's not about whether it feels good or, or sounds good. What will be the end of this? Right? You, you, that's why it's, it's, you are asking for old path. Hey, <laughs> that there are some old paths which God has established. Right? <laughs> God has established some paths and they, they produce a good life. They produce blessing. They produce great families. They produce, vic I'm sorry, excuse me, victories and enduring success and enduring goodness. And it produces eternal life. Right? And we are right now meditating on the way, our Lord Jesus, the only way to eternal life, to heaven, to the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Go with me to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 8. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. Eh? What is wisdom? You have to understand your way. Okay, I'm choosing this way. Where is it going to take me? What is the end? What is the fruit? What is the fruit? Hallelujah. Look at verse 12. Same chapter, Proverbs. You, know, you should read Proverbs. There's so much wisdom in it. You know, most of the things that people do, they, they wouldn't even think about it if they, if, they, <laughs> if they read Proverbs every day. You know, it's a good idea to read one prob every day. And keep reading it throughout the year. Eh? It will put some really good sense, solid wisdom into your mind and heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. There is a way which seems right unto a man. Eh, it sounds right. It looks right. <laughs> right. But the end of it. See, that's the whole point. What's the end? What's the end? What is the fruit? But the end thereof are the ways of death. Look at verse 15. The simple believes every word. And people who don't give much thought, right? Much, much um, uh, thought and study and examining, analyzing, you know, the things that are, they are hearing about or the path that is before them. They are called simple in the Bible, right? And these are people who don't think. They just believe everything that's being said. If somebody says, hey, this is good, they'll just go in that. Hey, that, that is bad, they won't go in that. Or oh, that person is a good person, they will just blindly believe. Or oh, that person is evil, oh, yes, evil. They believe everything they hear. And Bible calls such people simple, right? But the prudent man looks well to his going. Who is the prudent man? This is the man who thinks, right? Um, 
A prudent man looks well to his going. Right? He looks, he ponders, he examines, he questions, he thinks, he analyzes. Right? He gives thoughts to his steps. Okay. <laughs> this is the path I'm taking. Where is it taking me? Right? He looks and considers well where he is going. Carefully considers. Cautious. Right? It, it's not quick to believe everything he's hearing. Now you sift and weigh everything. Hallelujah to Jesus. And God wants us to function like this. He doesn't want you to believe everything you're hearing. And if Eve has practiced, practiced this, now we wouldn't be in this mess. Right? She just believed the, that the first lie that she heard about God, she chose to believe it. Right? You understand this? So, you, you should question. You should examine. You should ponder. You should uh, check it with the word of God. You should consult the commune with the Holy Spirit. Ask him, what do you think about this matter? You know, when I see, you know, these days, the Holy Ghost has been leading me more and more. If I see something in the TV, if I see something in the, I read something in the paper, if I hear something, and I'm, ta I'm talking about, you know, important matters, right? And um, I, I'll, I'll ask God, what, what, what's your heart concerning this matter? What do you think? What's the truth about this? Show me. Teach me. Right? Because these people lie. They lie through their teeth. They know they are lying. They are pushing an agenda. They are pushing a, 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 you know, a goal, a purpose that they want uh, to accomplish. Hallelujah. So you really have to question. A Christian ought to be wise as a serpent, our Lord Jesus said. Hallelujah. Harmless as a dove, but wise as a serpent. Hallelujah. So, hey, examine, question, think, check it in the light of God's holy word. Right? Check it with the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes our head, we, we haven't got, we haven't received a lot of knowledge. But the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit. Hey, this, this is not good. This, this, this ain't good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, then. Let's go to Acts chapter 6. We are talking about defending our faith. We looked at Psalm 22. And the Bible even then spoke about scoffers. You know, the Bible talks about scoffers. People who scoff at the knowledge of our Lord Jesus, right, and the knowledge of the Word of God, knowledge about God the Father. People scoff. You know, it, it's not a new thing. But this time and age, it's, it, it's, a, it's a, actually a sign. <laughs> and scoffing increases. And you can see a lot of scoffing going around. Hallelujah. And as a Christian, you should be equipped to handle these scoffers. People who mock the way of Jesus, people who mock the truth about Jesus, people who mock your faith, you should know how to handle that. You should know how to answer that. Right? That's why it's so important that you read your Bible every day. That's why it's so important that you develop a personal relationship with Jesus. But through prayer, through study of word, through praise and communion. Hallelujah. That's why it's so important that you go to a good local church. That's why it's so important that you hear good messages like this. Why? See, it, 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 it equips you. It will equip you to hold fast to Jesus, to stay strong in Jesus, and to answer, and to defend your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Go with me to Psalm 122. Psalm 122. Psalm 122. So, we read a lot. And... Um, we came to this part and I'm sorry, did I say Psalm 122? My mistake. Psalm 22. <laughs> right? Psalm of the crucifixion. The Psalm of the cross. Hallelujah to Jesus. Look at verse 7. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. You know, these guys were not silent about it. It was not a you know, small little smirk. No, they laughed to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head. They did it during the time when Jesus was alive. You remember, um, Luke brings it out very nicely. Go with me to Luke. Luke chapter 8, towards the end of that chapter. You know, where, when our Lord Jesus went to the house of Jairus. 
verse 52 and all wept and bewailed um, her the, the death of the daughter she has died actually right but he said weep not she is not dead but sleepeth and then for the, those people dead means that person ceased to exist he cannot that that person cannot come back to life but for god that's not how it is for god you just moved from one place to another you were in earth now death is just departure from your body and you entered into the spiritual realm right and you are still alive to god you are still very much alive to god verse 50 so that's what jesus is saying okay you call that dead you know if you go and study the old testament sleep is a common term used repeatedly by god to describe death because for him they don't cease to exist for us if you're just looking within the context of this life okay they have departed there now you know we say no more but in reality they are still there hallelujah you remember abraham our father you know the the teaching our lord jesus come concerning lazarus and the rich man abram was still alive and lazarus went to abram's bosom our lord jesus while you know while defending resurrection he spoke about how god is the god of the living meaning abram is still living as far as god we don't see abram as far as this earthly life is concerned he is dead he is departed but then for before god he is still alive very much and god is not the god no god who was the god of abraham god is the god of abraham even today and abraham is still alive hallelujah hallelujah to jesus hmm? that's why our lord jesus said god is not the god of the dead <laughs> hallelujah so notice when our lord jesus said these people did not understand what you are saying right so the they were just looking too natural minded to think about what jesus was saying so they said they laughed him to scorn right they laughed him to his face imagine laughing at the lord jesus right now for us it, 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 it's it's a total you know it's like blaspheme blasphemy right but they they looked at him as, as a prophet right and um, so <laughs> they they laughed him to scorn knowing that she was dead see the, the, the scorn is rooted in natural knowledge say natural knowledge where is scorn rooted the root of uh, scorning is natural knowledge incorrect knowledge partial knowledge that's where scorning comes from right scorning comes from natural knowledge incorrect knowledge or in other words uh, it's rooted in deception right and it's rooted in partial knowledge some people know a little bit but not much okay right? so that that's where scorning is uh, rooted in that's the foundation for scorning a lack of knowledge whether partially or totally hallelujah hallelujah to jesus and um, go with me to peter hallelujah to jesus second peter chapter 3 and um let's read from verse 1 this second epistle beloved i now write unto you in both which i stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that you be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets old testament and of the commandment of us the apostles new testament right commandment of us the apostles of the lord and savior so he is saying old testament new testament be mindful of it read it study it hallelujah knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts another basis or foundation for scoffing is that they want to do their own thing they don't want to be accountable to god the father see you should know the foundation because many times it it, it is it is uh, packed with the um, uh you know noble ideas scoffing i'm talking about right it will come packaged right and the package is this is a noble idea and you guys are holding fast to some archaic old useless idea that's how they will talk to us so you should know the truth about everything now in this verse that there shall come in the last days scoffers who walk after their own lusts that that's another foundation one is lack of knowledge partial or whole right the other one is they want to do their own thing and because the word of god uh, places a restriction on that 
contradicts that and uh, reproves that they will scoff at jesus they will scoff at god the father they will scoff at the word of god do you see this hallelujah keep reading and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation for this they willingly forget say willingly are ignorant of you see that ignorance is the root of scoffing again right of that by the word of god the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water in the water let's not get into that part now hallelujah so in light of that you need to learn how to defend your faith let's begin today right to look at the defense of stephen right hallelujah there are other things you know we could have spoken from we could have begun at um, the defense that peter gave but you know i am led by the holy spirit to start here so go with me to acts chapter 6 actually that's where all every all these things begin so verse 8 and stephen full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people right so he was bearing testimony to the resurrection of the lord jesus and that's what these people were doing uh, right is that jesus is alive and well jesus is the messiah jesus is god the Fa- jesus is the son of god right jesus is god almighty and so they were bearing witness to jesus if you go back to chapter 5 Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Mm. The Bible talks about how they bore um, witness, res- witness to our Lord Jesus. I think it's in chapter 4. Hallelujah to Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Yeah, let's read from verse um, 32 and 33. and the multitude of them that believed I'm talking about christians were of one heart and of one soul neither said any of them that art uh, out of the things which he possessed was his own but they all had things common and verse 33 with great power gave the apostles what witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus great grace was upon them all so they had great grace and they had great power and they were witnessing the resurrection of the lord jesus right and that, that that's what stephen was doing he was bearing witness to the lord jesus because everything that they were doing they were doing in the name of our lord jesus christ right uh, stephen was not starting in a, a, a cult you know the, i i I'm, i'm this i'm that no he was bearing witness in you know, if you were starting a cult they wouldn't have come against him so much <laughs> but he was witnessing jesus he was standing for jesus he is saying hey the name of jesus will heal you jesus will heal you jesus is true jesus is risen from the dead hallelujah they preached jesus go with me to acts chapter 8 look at now after the persecution notice something is said about um, philip after you know stephen was um, martyred um look at this philip right verse 4 let's begin there therefore they that were scattered talking about believers up uh, that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word what word then philip went down to the city of samaria and preached christ unto them so what happens when they when he preached christ the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did see when you preach christ when you preach jesus miracles happen because jesus is a miracle doer our god is a god of miracles our god is a god uh, uh, of signs and wonders our god heals our god answers our god is a god almighty is the god almighty and he releases his power to meet the needs of the people when our lord jesus was on the earth he released power to meet the needs of the people went everywhere doing good healing all those who were oppressed of the devil see that's what stephen was doing he he believed in the lord jesus right and he, and and he was bearing witness to the lord jesus so and because he did that 
verse 9. Then there are all certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and the Cyrenians and Alexandrians and of them of Cilicia and of Asia disputing with Stephen. So they disputed with him. Hallelujah. Meaning they argued with him about what he was uh, uh, preaching and uh, teaching and bearing testimony to. Hallelujah. He was bearing testimony to our Lord Jesus. And uh, they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. See, this is the key. The wisdom and the spirit. Underline that phrase. The wisdom and the spirit. Right? The wisdom and the Holy Spirit. When you talk about Jesus, these are the two things you should be very mindful of. Right? You should speak in wisdom and you should be led by the Holy Spirit. Right? Hallelujah. It is very important. You should make this your prayer. Father, let me speak about Jesus. Help me to speak about Jesus in wisdom and by the Holy Spirit. Paul talks about, you know, speaking the word in the Holy Spirit, in the power of the Holy Spirit with much assurance. See, the word of God should be spoken. Wisdom should be spoken in the Holy Spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit, with the power of the Holy Spirit, with much assurance. Hallelujah. This should become your prayer. You remember what the apostles prayed? Give us all boldness, right? To speak your word. What was the result of that prayer? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? Hallelujah. Because the word should be preached by the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. Hmm? Hallelujah to Jesus. So they were not able to resist it. They tried to find fault. They tried to prove that he was wrong. But, you know, he is speaking, he is doing the works of God. He is speaking truth. And uh, he was able to answer them in wisdom, with wisdom. And uh, he was able to an answer them with the help of the Holy Spirit. They just were not able to resist it. And this is what our Lord Jesus promised, isn't it? We looked at it in the previous messages. So what did they do then? Right? Then they suborned men. Which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So now they hired men, right, paid money, hired people, right, to uh, speak lies about Stephen. They couldn't argue with him directly because he was telling the truth. They just couldn't, you know, deal with that, right. And because they were opposed to this, they hired people to tell lies, to speak blasphemous words, you know, um, to lie, and accused him of what? Speaking blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Hallelujah. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes came upon him, caught him and brought him to the council. And then, um, and notice this verse 13, set up false witnesses. Hallelujah false witnesses which said this man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place the temple and the law so they, they, there are four things they are mentioning here against Moses right Moses meaning the law right which was what he taught Moses taught and against God you know you remember how the Pharisees used to say when Jesus healed a blind man they said oh uh, you are a, a, a disciple of that man but we are uh, disciples of Moses <laughs> so that's what these guys are saying right? so they are saying he is speaking blasphemous words against Moses or the law the first five books of the Bible and against God right and they set up false witnesses to say he also spoke against the holy place right so they are accusing him of uh, blaspheming against Moses the law against God and against this holy place. This is the accusation, right? And uh, Stephen is answering to these specific accusations when he is answering. So when you read the words of Stephen in um, Acts chapter 7, you should have these things in mind. That's when you can you know, understand and analyze the difference properly because he is answering these accusations, right? What was he accused of? 
blaspheming against Moses, against God, against the temple, against the law. And that's the accusation. So, beginning in chapter 7, he begins to answer them. And, and um, I, I love the way the Holy Ghost leads you to answer. He, 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 you know, many of these differences are not one word answers. Right? They, they have a structure, the answer and the difference has a structure. It has great wisdom. You, know, um, you, remember, you guys would remember um, when we spoke about prayer, we studied some of the prayers in the Bible. They have great wisdom given by the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> Whatever the Holy Spirit gives you, it, it has wisdom. Right? And the prayers were, were like sculpted uh, you know, statues or, or, or a great painting. It's just beautiful, it has a lot of intricate details and understanding, knowledge and wisdom, isn't it? And the difference of Stephen is like that. Right? We have those great prayers prayed by Moses, Jehoshaphat, Solomon and um, other people in the Bible. Right? But here we look as one of those great, great defense that was made. Right? concerning the faith in the Lord Jesus. And we are going to start, we are going to look at that. Hallelujah. We are going to begin studying that. Uh, so Stephen, um, I think we, we are out of time. If we start, we can't do any justice to it today. Right? So uh, we will study this. We will study this entire um, uh, defense. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And uh, he begins from, you know, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham. So he goes back to the origin. See, the, the, the Jewish nation started with Abraham, right? Before that, you know, it was Adam, right? The God of God of uh, mankind. That's how it was. And then God separated Abraham and started dealing with him. And from that time, it is mentioned also as the God of Abraham. And the Jews came from Abraham. So Stephen. In order, to, you know, he's showing his understanding of who the Jews are, right? And um, what the law says, what Moses said, right? About the temple, he, he is covering everything in this defense. Hallelujah. So he begins with Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, then. We will study this in the next message. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon.